Hi folks, this is Donald. Today you find me in the grand old city of Edinburgh, Scotland, where I'm from, and I'm having a go at sketching a postcard, something that you could draw out and send to someone if you wanted to. I've never done this before, but it's not too much different to sketching in a sketchbook. All I've done is take a piece of A4 watercolour paper and I've cut it into four. So a postcard size is A6 and so I took a piece of A4, cut it in four, that brings an A4 paper down to A6 and then I've used one of the quarters as my postcard. So I chose this picture because I like this little alleyway. Edinburgh is absolutely full of alleys like this and in Scotland we call them the close. Don't know why we call them that, that's just what we do. So this is the close and I am drawing from the shadows looking out. I thought this was a nice scene to do because it crams in an awful lot of detail in a tiny amount of space. And I liked the natural sort of frame that the edge of the alleyway creates. Once the outer frame has been drawn, I start with the nearest objects and I will work my way back into the far distance of the city. And I will be doing this sketch in ink and watercolour, so I will be adding paint onto it once I've done the drawing. I'm using a fountain pen which is filled with Diatramentis document ink, which is waterproof, or so I'm told, so I wanted to find out because I'm only a recent convert to drawing with fountain pens and I wanted to put the claims of the ink to the test because this is supposed to be a really good ink for fountain pen use. It doesn't clog up and so far that is the case. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. I haven't cleaned it out at all and it's still coming out nice and smoothly, so which is great because one of the things that had really put me off fountain pen usage was the maintenance and having to clean out the pen, which I really can't be bothered with. So this sink sounded ideal and so far it's working out, but I wanted to test how it would handle watercolour and whether it worked as they claim it does. So I started with the foreground building on the right hand side. There's the drain pipe, then there's the edge of the building behind it. If you're finding it difficult to see in the shadows, then the full size photograph is available to download. Just check out the link in the description for that. Once the building has drawn in, I'm putting in the lamp that sticks out from the wall. And this scene does pack in a lot of detail in quite a small space. So when it comes to the end, I would want to make sure that the lamp stands out. So I will make that darker than the objects in the background. I know that you do get proper watercolour postcards that are blank and you can do this exact same thing with a proper postcard. Companies like Etcher produce postcards. Their ones are 100% cotton, so they'd be a good quality one if you were going to try out this, but I think it comes in packs of 100, which seemed excessive to me when I was only trying it out for the first time. So I thought I would just cut up a sheet from an old pad. It was the first ever watercolour pad that I bought and it completely disintegrated. Most of the pages are loose now that I have left. So I just cut up one of those and it gives me the same idea just to try it out and see if it was something I would want to do more of. And I think I probably would. I would quite like to try the cotton ones just to see what the difference is and they're already cut up for you. When I looked at them initially, I thought they looked quite expensive. I think they were about £33 for a pack, but then I figured you do get 100 postcards in that, which works out about 33 pence each, which is not too bad, I suppose. So I'm just going slow and steady and I did draw the section on top of the lamp maybe slightly too large but that's all right. Looks more like an upside down ice cream cone. It's been stuck on top of the lamp. But maybe that's quite fitting for Scotland because there is a strange running joke that Scottish people seem to have where they put traffic cones on top of statues, particularly in the city of Glasgow. This seems to happen all the time. I have no idea why it's just something that's cottoned on that there's always traffic cones sitting on the heads of statues for some reason. So just behind the lamp there is a balcony, so I'm drawing that in now and it is a bit tricky trying to squash all of this information in. Normally I'd be using a much bigger page and I'd have room to space this out, but I'm cramming it all in. So there's not a lot of 
room in between objects. But I think it's quite a fun challenge to try this because it's really quite different to how I would normally think about drawing such a scene. In fact, I'm not sure I would even normally attempt a scene like this where there is a natural border. I would tend to go right to the edges of the page, but I thought this would be a good one because it will force me to stop before I get to the edge and leave lots of white space around the sides. I do love the architecture of Edinburgh, all those oldie worldy buildings and alleyways. It just feels like you've stepped back into the olden days or a movie set. I drew that building on the left hand side, fitting in as best as I could, but I did struggle to get it all in. So there's meant to be a sort of little curved wall to the left of it that I couldn't fit in. So I just left it out. And that's totally fine in sketches. You don't always have to fit everything in that's in the scene. You can edit and particularly when you're doing a squashed up scene like this I doubt you'll have room to fit everything in the entire scene so I'm just going with whatever I can fit. So once you get past the building that I've drawn on the left, the steps that you can't really see take you down to a lower walkway and then there's a wall on the left side which I'm drawing in just now. And some of this won't really look right until the whole scene is finished because the upper part and the lower part of the walkway is just to, I bet you that the steps are hidden so you can't really see the, th the part that's joined them together. So then there's a fence, again you probably won't see but if you have the full size photograph you will see it in better detail. There's a, a 
fence and then there's a little signpost and trying to pack in all this kind of detail on such a small scale is quite tricky. I would definitely find this easier to sketch on an A4 sheet but the idea is to do a postcard, something you could send to someone and maybe I wouldn't send it directly in the post like this, I would probably put it in an envelope just to protect it but I do quite like the idea of drawing out a postcard rather than just buying one in a shop. So next time you're on your travels or even just sending a postcard from wherever it is that you live to someone, that would be maybe a nice little surprise for them. Something a bit different and more original because it'll be something that you've put a bit of thought into. And if it doesn't turn out very well, I'll maybe send it to someone I don't like. So now I move on to the buildings in the background and I decided to draw those a little bit looser, a little bit less detailed and not quite as sharp so I wasn't pressing as hard on the pen and that's one of the things that I'm finding I quite enjoy about fountain pens is the variation in the line width that you can get so just not pressing as hard I'm getting a much lighter line and I was finding that was helpful because I can create a bit of distance by having a lighter building in the background compared to the foreground. And then just a few scribbles to signify windows and markings on the church spire. I didn't quite catch the top of it, I did draw it a little bit big but that's okay. some more buildings behind all of that as well but same thing just a bit more scratchy a bit less of a solid line just so those buildings and distance are not competing with the ones in the foreground and you can emphasize distance by the way you apply the paint which I will be doing once the drawing is complete In terms of the drawing style, this probably isn't as knowingly wonky as I would typically do. It's maybe a slightly more traditional. Any wonky lines are just naturally wonky. And this was the first time drawing with a fountain pen on cold press paper. I thought the line was maybe marginally thicker than on the types of pads and paper that I would typically use, but it's still fairly sharp so I'm not too unhappy with it. I think maybe cold pressed paper does absorb the ink slightly more than a smoother type of paper that I would normally use.
and then I added some three-dimensional lines into the boxes on that building in the middle. It didn't really need that because they do look more like windows now and it's, they weren't actually windows, it's just marks in stone, but that's fine. It's, it's not as if anyone's going to say, well, those are meant to be bricks and they look like windows. I return your postcard, I reject it. It is inaccurately drawn. couple of windows on the wall just behind the lamp so I'm just trying to squeeze those in so it's getting a little muddled now I didn't want to add too much ink that it just becomes a muddle of detail and you can't see any of it there was a wire running underneath the drain pipe so I wanted to put that in. I like all that kind of detail, it's all the clutter and stuff that you might edit out of a postcard. I like the fact that you've spent the time to draw in things like wires and guttering and drain pipes in a postcard which is supposed to be. Come and visit here, look where I am, isn't this a lovely drain pipe? and then some dots to create texture for the wall. Simple little dots all over. As ever, when I start drawing detail, I just can't stop. When a few dots would have been sufficient, I drew half a million of them. And then notice I hadn't drawn the metal edging of the lamp. And then I decided to add in a light bulb, even though there isn't one in the picture. And I think I'm happy enough with the ink drawing section, so now it's time to move on to the watercolour. Now my attempts at watercolour often end up quite garish and over the top, so I decided to try and keep this one quite subtle. And I'm starting off with a Davies Grey from my Van Gogh watercolour set. Davies Grey is a warm toned grey and I'm applying it loosely, leaving white patches to add a bit of texture. And I'm going to go around a fair amount of the scene, lightly applying a wash of the Davies Grey to create the first layer and then I will go over it again once it's dry with another darker layer in selected areas to build up the contrast. What I was trying to do here was apply the same sort of techniques that I normally use when I'm using 
marker pens to colour in a scene and I quite easily could have used marker pens for this. It would have achieved a very similar effect. But I think watercolour is something that I just need to keep practising with. It's not something that comes naturally to me. I don't have any training in watercolour. So if I want to get better at it, I just have to keep practising and trying things out. And I think that's the best way to approach urban sketching or any kind of art. If you're new at it, still learning, then it's really just practising and accepting that it might not turn out exactly how you'd hoped. I think the great thing about doing sketches of this size on postcard size paper is that if you completely make a mess of it, it's not exactly something that you've spent a vast amount of time on. You've not used up a vast amount of paper or paint and so you can just do another one. When you think about it, I've taken one sheet of A4 that I might have done this on and I've cut it into four. So I've got four opportunities to go and have a go at this sketch rather than one. So it's a brilliant way to practice. and the diatromentous ink is holding up perfectly with the watercolour, absolutely no sign of bleeding. It is locked into the paper, even with the water over the top of it, so that's that test passed. So I would recommend this ink, it's great if you're looking for a fountain pen ink that is waterproof and you can use with watercolour. This one is ideal because it appears not to clog up the pen and is waterproof, so that's good news. I shouldn't ever have to go back to fine liners now, I think I'm pretty much stuck fast onto the idea of drawing with fountain pens from now on. I went a little bit dark on the windows, so one thing I do like about watercolour that you can't do with brush pen markers is that if you go in a bit too dark you can just dry off your brush and then go over the part you've gone too dark with and it will suck the paint back up into the brush. It's almost like magic. I'm done with the Davies Grey for now. I'm now going on to my second colour, which is raw sienna. And I'm going to apply this quite lightly. I don't want to have it too strong and I'm going to try and leave patches of white again as I did with the street. I want to try and take advantage of the fact that I'm using watercolour by leaving gaps and letting it look a bit more natural because if I'm not going to do that then I suppose what's the point in using watercolour paint? I might as well just use the brush pens like I usually do. And in some respects it would be so much easier for me if I just went on some kind of watercolour course and learnt all the stuff that I needed to learn but I quite enjoy just figuring it all out myself and learning through making the mistakes that I inevitably make and then looking at it and figuring out what went wrong and how I can fix it the next time. And I think one of the things that I've been slowly learning is that you can start lighter with watercolour and then go in with darker shades over the top and that's exactly the same process that I go through when I'm drawing with marker pens but it has taken me a bit longer to work out that that's the same idea when you're doing watercolour. very loosely applied the colour to the background buildings but I'm not going to add any more. I want to keep those buildings light but I will darken up the ones in the foreground and as fancy watercolour people will say that gives you atmospheric perspective when things in the foreground are darker than things in the background and that's what creates the sense of distance. So 
now I'm going in with my first layer of Payne's Grey on the lamp. And this will need to be a lot darker, but I didn't want to go too dark to begin with. So again, just painting a layer of fairly light Payne's Grey. And I'm using the pointy brush that came with my watercolour set. I haven't gone out and bought this one, this was just what was in the set. It's a size 6 pointy brush. It's got a nice pointed tip on it, so it's excellent for stuff like this when you've got really intricate details to paint in. And so long as I don't have too much water on the brush, it will go in just about as neatly as if I was using a brush pen, and that's what I was looking for with this. There's no point going in with gallons of water on the brush, it would just bleed and go everywhere. I'm really trying to keep this as neat and tidy as possible. I did consider painting the surrounds of where the close is really dark to get the sense that you're inside the close, but the further the sketch went on I thought I'm just quite liking it as white, lots of white space around about, so I decided just to leave it as it is. But maybe that's something you could try if you were giving this a go, is to paint the outsides and see what it looks like. And as I said, Edinburgh is actually full of closes like this. So I might try another one at a future date where I do paint in the surrounds and see what that looks like. So now painting the drain pipe, and I think I had a little bit too much water on the brush, so this is what I was talking about, it just splodges out a little bit too much. And this is one of the tricky things that I find about watercolours, it's, it's less predictable, you don't know exactly what's going to happen until the brush hits the page. Have you got the darkness of the paint correct? Have you got the right amount of pigment? Is there too much water on the brush? It's a bit more haphazard and I know that will improve with experience but I think to an extent watercolour is always going to be like that. It's just the way the medium is and it's why I like brush pens so much is because you know exactly what's going to come out. I suppose that's one of the downsides as well is you do know exactly what's going to come out so there's much less room for improvisation and experimentation. When I do a brush pen sketch I know pretty much exactly how it's going to turn out before I've even started. Whereas with watercolour I've really got no idea what's going to happen. Just double checking that the ground was dry and it is, so I can start painting in a few random bricks just to add a bit of variety. This is something that I often do with brush pens as well. couple of adjustments I got the tone that I wanted so then I was able to continue and I'm just selecting them at random just a few
and I am holding the brush right down at the bottom as I would when I was when I'm holding a pen it's just because I want to be quite precise and it's not the way that you would hold it if you were going for a very loose effect but because I'm trying to be precise and keep the paint within the lines that's the way I have to hold it Now I've gone back to the Davies Grey and I've gone for a darker mix this time, leaving some gaps so that the lighter grey shows through. But making this darker will bring it forward and it's helping to create the distance as we look across the city. And then onto the panes grey for another layer on the lamp. Again, I'm trying to make that stand out. I'm bringing it forward so that it doesn't look like it's the same distance away from your eye as the buildings in the background. I want it to be right up close and then it will help pull the background buildings away from us. So there's quite a lot of pigment on the brush, not a lot of water. This time I'm trying to be quite precise so that the lamp really stands out and then you capture all the ornate details. And I'm being very slow, so I don't want to mess it up. I'm quite enjoying the way that this was looking, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't make any major painting errors at this stage. And painting that in dark really does bring it forward. It makes it jump out. And a slightly lighter wash of the same Payne's Grey just to add in a few more extra shadow details. What I'm adding in now is barely even noticeable, it's just to add, just to take the brightness off. So really the only white part of the scene is the sky and then the surrounding white. And I did think about adding some blue for the sky but I thought I quite liked the muted colour palette. So I didn't really think it needed it, so I just left it as it is. So once the paint is completely dry, I went in with the drawing pen. Again, just to add a few more brick details, and I'm not going to any great lengths here to make this Super detailed, it was just a few dashes.
because I can't help myself, I started doing more dots on the building on the left to give that a bit of texture as well. Always fiddling, I never know when to stop. But overall I was quite pleased with how this turned out. It's quite a different sort of sketch for me. A much more muted palette and a much more sensible way of drawing. I feel like a whole new me. I then decided I would put in a bit of yellow in the lamp. So I used the lemon yellow, just a very quick splash of that. It didn't make a huge amount of difference but I thought I would try that out just to make it look like the light is on. I would recommend having a go at painting a postcard and sending it to someone. It would be a nice little surprise for them. So all we need to do now is flip it over, draw in a stamp box and add a few lines for the address and you're ready to send it. And if you'd like to see more sketch inspiration like this, you can click on this video right here and I will see you in the next one.